is called model-based testing for everyone. So wh why do we call this presentation model-based testing for everyone? Well, it turns out that we followed this uh, topic for a long time, and uh, MBT has been a research topic for a long time. We've seen that researchers use the MBT in the labs, uh, but uh, MBT has been powerful, but uh, kind of difficult to use for regular people. And it's also been kind of unclear what the costs and benefits are related to MBT. The point is that uh, this is changing. You see that uh, MBT is uh, now a lot easier to use. There are MBT tools available, and uh, there are actually a couple of studies of MBT in action, and actually we, we've done a couple of those studies ourselves and, and talk about that. So we will uh, kind of understand and talk about MBT uh, by example using a couple of case studies. And we will do that uh, by first uh, comparing MBT to manual and automated testing because uh, you know, we have a pretty good feel for what manual testing is, uh, uh, but we, sometimes it's not clear what the the pros and cons are, and then automated testing, and what's the difference between automated testing and MBT. So the uh, second part, we're going to talk more about what uh, MBT really is, get into some of the details, we'll talk a bit about what some of the tools are that we see, and some results when MBT has been applied to, to real systems, and also some of the costs and benefits a little bit about how to introduce MBT to at the end. So that's the agenda for today. So we're going to start with a case study. This is uh, from healthcare.gov. And we want to look at the, that uh, website because we want to compare MBT to manual and automated testing. So this is uh, healthcare.gov. This is actually what it looked like uh, before uh, March 15, when you could still sign up. Some of the features we want to look at, uh, they're actually still available, but uh, you have to get into another uh, menu option. So what we're going to look at is uh, this option, see plans before I apply. And uh, say that the, the testing task here is to kind of check that these uh, premium estimates are correct. So this is what you do before you sign up. You can kind of enter your data and get the premium estimate. But before we begin, I just want to say that, you know, this is just an example based on testing of a, a website that we all understand. It's a good discussion topic because we all understand what the inputs are and what the different, different data items are. It turns out that most systems have similar testing challenges, so we can kind of apply the same thinking to other systems. And actually, we have a, a NASA system that we're going to talk about in the second part here. And for this discussion, we're going to focus on functional correctness, not usability or look and feel. And the reason is that uh, MBT is especially good for this kind of functional testing, whereas human beings are a lot better to for testing of usability and, and other issues, more software issues. So it turns out that when you get into healthcare.gov and you want to kind of get an estimate before you sign up, you get a number of different options. For example, which best describes you. So we picked, I'm looking for coverage for myself or my family. What type of coverage do you need? We picked health. Then you have to pick a state, Alabama, or a county. And then you have to list the, the ages of the people you're looking to cover. In this example, we listed four people. But as you see, you can, you can fill with this. You can add another person. You can change the ages. You can remove people. So there's a lot of options. That's the whole point here. There's a lot of options here. Then a number of other questions. Just to go through this quickly. Do you have employer coverage? And we said no. Yeah, how many people are in your household? Four. So, so this is different than the people you try to cover. And what is your household's expected income for 2014? And you just picked 75K here. I have a number. 
And it's clear that the, all these different options will lead to different results. I mean, that's the whole point of asking these questions. And uh, once we're done, we can click on View Marketplace Plans to see what, what kind of estimates did these, these set of options lead to. And remember, we're kind of looking for to check the correctness of the estimates here. And if you really want to do that, then so we get six health plans, and we expected six, not five or seven. So that's something we need to check for. The monthly premium, the estimate, remember these are all estimates, so we can't really be sure it's going to be exactly like this. But on this site, we expect the $373, not lower, not higher. And as you see, there's a lot of other uh, things too, deductibles, out-of-pocket maximums, all kinds of things that you need to check. So now the problem here is that, of course, this kind of, this is one scenario. But the problem is that uh, the fact that these estimates are correct, if you say, yes, these were correct, it doesn't mean that the estimates are correct for other settings, as we know. Everybody knows who's ever done testing that just to test for one set of configuration settings doesn't mean that everything is correct. So uh, it's clear that one test case is not enough because there's a lot of other questions. Are the estimates correct also if I make 70K or 80K instead of 75? What if I have one child or three children instead of two? What if my age is 55 instead of 35? What if I'm a single parent? What if I live in a different county or state? And then not only that, we know that people change their minds. They want to try different options. So they might go back, this user might go back and change the input. Or the user might take another path. You know, today the user takes one path and looks at the estimate, and the, but they might take other paths through the system to get to the same kind of estimate. And then we want the system, of course, to always come up with the same results. We actually heard of, taking Amazon example, that in the past at least, it was possible to buy a product by taking one path and get one price, and take another path through the system, buy the same product, but get another price. So that's, of course, something you want to test for. I mean, then there's a lot of other kind of complications. Are these estimates correct if I use IE or Firefox instead of Chrome? Or if I run it on Mac or Linux instead of Windows? And you know that Windows comes in many different versions too, XP, 7, 8. So in the end, how many test cases do we need? We need many. I mean, and even if we have all these test cases, how much testing do we need to do? Well, we need to do a lot because you have to run the same test cases on all these browsers, all these platforms, different environments. So we need to test a lot. So uh, looking at the options here, I want to start with manual testing because this is actually what a lot of people do because it's very kind of easy to get into. So what does manual testing mean here then? Well, we need to write down the test instructions, for example, in Word or Excel. And the test instructions look like open Google Chrome browser, very detailed. Go to the address bar or press the F6 button, type healthcare.gov, go to the site, and then make sure it looks like that. And then click see plans before I apply, enter Alabama, four people, 75K, all the different options we need. And then finally check what we need to check, for example, that the, the blue say bronze is $373. But this is just the first part. And we have to remember that, I mean, we're coming back.